people. I am so happy that you're here today because I've been planning this video for far too long. Months and months and years and probably decades. We're finally in the kitchen. We're finally getting it done. Freezer meals. Everyone loves a good freezer meal. It's so nice to have when you're having a busy day and you just wanna pull something out and you're like, oh my gosh, what are we having for dinner? We don't know. A freezer meal is a great option for that. We're all busy. We've all got stuff going on. So I have curated what I believe to be the perfect list of new freezer meal recipes. I'm actually not sure we're gonna get to all of them today. And looking at it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot, especially if you have a small freezer. Uh, breakfast bagels, what does this one say? Look, I even got fancy and I put a post-it note on here, but it just says freezer mills. <laughs> uh, thanks, Kim, you're so organized. Okay, so we have breakfast quesadillas. Yes, I know it's pronounced quesadilla. I just joke around a lot here. It's fine. We can call those Brecadillas, we call pizza dillas over here when you fill up a quesadilla with like pizza stuff. Okay, anyway, so we've got brecadillas, breakfast bagels, chicken tacos, pizza rolls, but they're going to be amazing. Just wait for it. Madras lentils, can't wait for that. Chicken and veggie freezer packs, cannot wait for that. One of my favorite go-tos. Cauliflower sausage kale soup, oh my gosh, and Bobby's goulash. I just realized I should have like rewrote this to make it look legible and i also realized for the breakfast bagels i should have gotten canadian bacon i did not buy that so you know what we're going to work with what we have which is what we always do i did print out some of the recipes here it's like who am i even though i think some of these are like dinner recipes so we'll just get over that as always i take a recipe as inspiration and i kind of just fill in the gaps and do whatever i want because it's my kitchen and i'm the one eating the food and i inspire you to do the same in your kitchen. So what's first? I think we're gonna get everything to make the sausage kale soup, mostly because my kale is starting to look a little sad. <laughs> it looked a lot happier uh, day one. You know what, I don't even know what I need. Oh, I forgot to thaw out my bacon. I have meat thawing out in the sink over here. Hopefully it works. Well, I guess we'll just cut the bacon while it's frozen. It's easier to cut when it's frozen anyway. Or at least that's what I'm telling myself. Here's everything that you're going to need. It seems like a pretty simple recipe, kind of reminiscent of the potato soup that I recently made in a what's for dinner video. Uh, instead of potatoes though, it's cauliflower. So I guess I'll just grab the largest pot I own and get to it. Actually, first let's get our miso en place ready. But before that, I feel like we need to get a little festive with an apron. Should I put on my Christmas apron? Are we there yet? Are we at that level? You ready for it? I'm not. I got a Thanksgiving apron, which seems more appropriate, but um, no. You know what? Let's get jolly with it. I'm gonna chop up some onions, but first, I just wanna ask, does it bother anyone else when you get cans and they don't stack on top of each other? Why? Why? In one of my past freezer meal videos, I'm, ooh, this seems a little soft. Oh, it smells so good though. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Anyway, in one of my past freezer meal videos, I made a like chicken gnocchi soup, or spinach gnocchi soup. Oh my gosh, it was heavenly. And I have to tell you, I loved having that as a freezer meal option. One, soup is really eat, like quick to thaw out. And two, especially while it's like, you know, colder weather season, even though I live in Florida and cold weather doesn't really exist here, it's nice to just have something comfortable, like a soup ready to eat. So I'm excited about this one. And I will also mention, I'm breaking the rules, which is basically what I always do, but I'm making something for my freezer meal in bulk that I've never had before. And typically when you make freezer meals, you want to make what you know that you like, so that way you eat through it. <laughs> but I love soup, I love kale, I love cauliflower. What's not to love about this dish? I'm just gonna cut up three onions. The recipe calls for, I think just one, and I'm probably going to double the recipe. Mostly, I would triple it or quadruple it, but I feel like my pot isn't going to be big enough, so that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna chop up my onions. I'm probably going to like de-stem my kale and then cut the florets, the cauliflower florets, into smaller pieces. And then we'll get cooking in my awesome professional cooking show. Same thing too. 
Ugh, I want to know, why does cauliflower smell like feet? <laughs> When we're finished cooking this soup, we will be putting it like in a blender to make it smooth. Or if you have an immersion blender, to be real, I don't have either one of those that is fully functioning. So I'm just going to use a potato masher. What I'm getting at is you don't have to cut the cauliflower. You need six cups of it, by the way. I don't know how, many, how much this is, but I'm going to use all that I have. I have two large bags of it. I would say six cups would be like two heads of cauliflower. This is 32 ounces, if you're wondering. Anyway, I'm just cutting it up into smaller pieces because I feel like, you know, it'll cook a little faster that way. And wow, would you look at that? It's exactly 12 cups. It's amazing how that works. All right, we're not even one recipe in and I've already made a mess of my entire kitchen. Uh, I wanted to show you how to devein a kale here. I use a dinosaur claw. T-Rex, if that's what you want to do. And I just take it, eh, and I pull it, like so. Perfectly de-stemmed kale. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. When that happens, you just improvise. Let's get a good piece here, okay? Come on, everybody's watching. You take it, and, oh, really? Again? All right. Somebody call the Food Network, I tell you. I am a professional. Oh my gosh, you know what I forgot to do? Wash this, wash your kale. It's so dirty. Ugh, I've made the mistake before. I thought I felt the grainy sand granules on my cutting board, but it was probably just the cauliflower. We're gonna wash it anyway, it's for the best. Okay, so fresh and so clean. If you have your salad spinner, whip it out. I don't have one, so I don't care about it. Okay, plus it's going in a soup. It doesn't have to be dry, you're not adding dressing. I am doing a great job showing you how to devein a kale. Rachel Ray, I'm her protege. That's good enough. Maybe your kale has to be fresh. There it is. Hey, still got it. You just pull it down, you pull it down. You know, kale gets a pretty bad rep, but as far as soups go, I've had it in like Supa Toscana recently. Oh my, blow my socks off. How have I never had that soup my entire life? It was delicious and I love that how the kale holds its shape and just doesn't just turn to mush in a soup. You know what I mean? Cause it's more firm. One step forward and another back I will never try to fool ya I'm one heartbeat away from going mad Girl, when you're looking like that Close up, close up I'ma get closer to you Yeah, got me, baby Got me hooked on you once again Girl, I need you Alright, I'm just gonna give it a rough chop here because the very last thing you need in your life is to be eating soup and having kale hanging out the side of your mouth. That's what I go to bed worrying about. <laughs> oh, how much kale do you actually need? That's something I don't know. Four cups, so eight cups. <laughs> look at that, exactly eight cups, it's amazing. Well, look at me, I went, oh, it's frozen. Oh man, well, it is a good idea to use your scissors to cut bacon if your bacon isn't frozen solid. <laughs> okay, 30 minutes later, we have cut up bacon. I'm gonna add it to a cold pan, make sure it renders all of the fat, and I'm going to add two pounds of ground sausage. I just feel like this is gonna add so much flavor, the sausage and then the bacon. I mean, can you ask for anything more? So. Let me just say this, the original recipe called for, let me use my fancy potato masher for this, six slices of bacon. Well, if you've met me, you know that's just not enough. However, the thick slices that come in the Costco packs, it, 12 slices were in there. So 12 slices of bacon in this case was one and a half pounds. So I'm just throwing that out there. Also, how am I supposed to cook sausage and bacon at the same time? It was probably a terrible idea to do this. Listen, if I made the recipe, I would say cook the bacon, then the sausage. I didn't make the recipe. So I'm just gonna cook it like this on high heat. Speaking of not following the rules, I figured, you know how we can get this done a little faster? If we cook two things at the same time. So into my Instant Pot, I'm going to throw in, what do I have, two and a half onions, like my ingredient bowl, <laughs> and then all of the cauliflower. Oh my gosh, is this even gonna fit? It must. Well, we're gonna pack that in there. A little bit of garlic. The recipe says two cloves, but you know how we do here. Just two spoonfuls, maybe three. 
And then you have 32 ounces of chicken broth or chicken stock, whatever you have. So I have these four small cans or just one big carton. I'm gonna pop the top on this and my Instant Pot and I are not really good friends, so I don't know how long to cook it. I'm gonna just guess, uh, 15 minutes? You know what, I do have these cheat sheets, but, oh wait, that's beans. I don't think cauliflower is on here, but looking at the vegetables, it all has a very low cook time. So I think I'm just gonna do 10 minutes or maybe eight, nine, let's do nine. I'm pretty infamous for undercooking stuff in my Instant Pot, so fingers crossed. Also, I did make these into printables, which I hope to share with you guys very soon. While that cooks, we're gonna check, oh, bacon grease. We're gonna check on our uh, floppy bacon over here. I don't know about you, but I like my bacon crispy, and this is not crispy bacon. Well, it's been about seven hours, and the Instant Pot still has yet to come to pressure, so I'm gonna move on with my life. I'm gonna put this meat aside. Oh, if you're keto right now, you're drooling. And I am not gonna wash the pot. <laughs> Look at that. But I am going to move on to good old Paula Dean and her Bobby's goulash. Guys, this recipe card is from legit 2004. I like stole it from my friend. It's a whole thing. I mean, did I steal it from her? I think it mostly from her mom. <laughs> I said, I'm taking this. So what you're going to need is four pounds of meat and mine actually thawed out pretty quickly unless it's not thaw. Just kidding. <laughs> well, we'll make it work, okay? We'll put that on the bottom. It'll be fine, no one will know. All right, and what I like to do is cook my onions right in with the meat. You need two onions. Wait, am I giving you the measurements for one or two? I cut up four onions. I have four pounds of meat, so take that for what it is. I'm doubling the recipe. I would triple it or quadruple it. I feel like I need, you know, big Bertha pots. I have big Bertha bowls. I do not have a big Bertha pot. Well, it would help if I turned the stove on. I cut the onions, I figured, you guys have seen me do that a million times. Actually, do you wanna know the rest of the stuff that's in this goulash? Let me get it out. Well, actually, I'm looking through the recipe, pretty simple ingredients. You need some tomatoes, you need some elbow noodles, you need some garlic, bay leaves, Italian seasoning, and that's basically it. It's a super simple meal, but it's so nice to have it ready on hand a uh, great family meal. Everyone will love it. Crowd pleaser for sure. And I'm sitting here wondering, wow, uh, the recipe as is makes enough to feed a crowd. Maybe I shouldn't have doubled it because this is the biggest pot I own. <laughs> While the meat is cooking over here, I pulled out my big mamma jamma. This is like the largest I own, but I don't like using it because ugh, I feel like it doesn't cook anything. It's, I mean, it's as slow as my Instant Pot. It takes 20 years for anything to come to a boil. Okay, how, what do you need for this? You need two 15 ounce cans of diced tomatoes and two 12, 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce. Well, you would think I didn't even plan for this video uh, because I don't have either one of those things, but I did plan, I promise. I just don't like diced tomatoes, even though these aren't, I mean, I'm gonna mush these up to bits so it'll be a uh, smooth consistency. So I got these from Costco and at first I thought they were 12 pounds, ounces I mean, because I overlooked the one pound. I almost added like six cans of these. <laughs> Would have been a tragedy, but good thing I caught my mistake. Just adding two cans of those. You know what, a part of me thought, Kim, you should take out your food processor and puree this up. Oh my God, speaking of puree. I knew I planned for this. Guys, I planned so hard. That was a jar of tomato sauce. It did not crack open. It's a good day. Anyway, I planned so hard for this that I forgot that I planned so hard for this, I guess. I, let's just keep crushing. I crush so hard. Oh, I should probably stir the meat. Uh -oh. Well, you know what? I'm really glad that you're here and that you told me I'm doubling this recipe because I do need four cans of this to add. So it's like a really great idea that I'm a good planner because I need this can. Do I need this can? Come on, Kim. Simple math here. One of these is 30 ounces, no? Okay, not quite. It's 28, but almost 30. So two of these, right, two of them is good for one recipe. Am, am I missing something here? Your brain. You're missing your brain. I can hear you all like, yes, Kim. 
out of the cans. Oh, it spit at me. Good thing I have my apron on. All right, we're good. Moving right along. I added the four cans and then I'm going to add some water. I have, I think one can is about four cups. I don't fill it up all the way. You could use a measuring cup if you're a normal human being. So six cups of water goes in if you are doubling. And then we're gonna add some fresh garlic to the meat. And by fresh, I mean out of the jar. It's like already minced and stuff. But I'm also gonna add just that much that much for the rest of it and then some Italian seasoning you also need some bay leaves I thought I bought some but apparently I didn't so I'm just gonna add some Italian seasoning I actually found some more in my cupboard so I'm gonna use the rest of this <laughs> then we're almost done we're gonna be done with Bobby's goulash before that instant pot comes to pressure maybe that wasn't the best idea on my end where's my measuring cup I'm not doing it I'm not doing it that way well I can't find my measuring cup that holds four cups at a time. I don't know where it is. And then I broke my other one. That's my life. Uh, so four cups of noodles. Any noodle that you want. Two, three, wait for it. Four cups. Perfect. Precisely four cups of nude. I'm just going to mix that in. Oh my gosh. You know what I love in this? And I'm probably going to do it to at least one uh, package that I put in a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna cook up my spaghetti squash. Oh yes, I love adding spaghetti squash to this. It just adds a bit of bulk and a bit of vegetable to it. And the kids don't even notice. They don't even care. Well, maybe yours will if they're the type to like pick out onions. You know what we forgot? Do you know, did you read the recipe thoroughly? Uh, Cause I didn't, I made it a hundred times. Coco Aminos otherwise known as soy sauce. You need like three tablespoons of that. Doubled is pretty much that much. If you are unaware, Coco Aminos is just like a soy free version. Look at it, everything fit in this pot. That makes me happy. I mean, I haven't put the sausage in here yet. It does look pretty much done. Okay, I'm gonna add the meat. Oh, this is a mistake. Okay, just wish me well. Oh, how do you do this without making a mess? or burning yourself. Okay, so once you add everything together, let the noodles cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but don't let them cook too long because you will be freezing this and then reheating it so you don't want your noodles to turn to mush. Oh my, the skill, the precision. Look, it fits perfectly in this pot too. It's amazing. It's top quality right there. Okay, now I'm just gonna mix it in. Oh, it smells good. Not good enough though. I'm gonna add some garlic. Couple spoonfuls. Oh, yes! I love a full pot. I feel like a witch with her cauldron. Ooh, what do what do witches say? I always wonder, what do they say? Mm, come to my house for Bobby's goulash. Actually, don't come to my house. More for me. So Bobby's goulash is almost finished, and guess what? Our Instant Pot still, oh, just came to pressure, yes! <laughs> Moving on to... Oh no, where is it? Did I get rid of it? <laughs> where is it? Oh, Joanna Gaines, it's cookbook. Where did I put it? You know, I think I have my life together. And then stuff like this happens. Joanna Gaines. Where is it? Oh my gosh. People, why? Why didn't you tell me? I'm like looking literally all over my house. Where did I put the cookbook? Did I give it to someone because every recipe I try to make comes out miserable? It's right here. <laughs> I started writing it down. I went on Pinterest, I was like, what? And then it came to me. Oh, it's in your book holder. Unbelievable. All right, all right, now I gotta find it. It better be good is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, homemade pizza dough, all right. It's a little dirty. That's why there's a plastic cover on it, you know? And a small bowl. Small bowl? Little does she know. Well, glory hallelujah, the Instant Pot is finally finished. You know what smells worse than raw cauliflower? Cooked cauliflower venting from an Instant Pot. The scent is going to linger amongst my entire house, I bet. Oh, Lord. Oops. It's still venting. It's still venting. It's still venting. Still venting. Let me just see if I can bust it open. Oh, it's hot! Oh, the smell. No amount of essential oil is going to be able to cover this stink up. Oh my gosh, if this isn't cooked. Moment of truth. 
smells terrible. Well, you know what? It's cooked enough. Okay, the chicken broth scent is very nice. I am just going to season it with some salt and pepper. It's about all the pepper I have in there. And I'm just gonna start mushing. I have a blender, but it, um, it sucks. <laughs> I don't wanna buy another one because I rarely use it. And you know what? This is the most physical activity I've had in, I don't know, since March. All right, I'm giving in. I'm using my food processor. If I could, if I could find the top. I know we recently cleaned it. Hey, my measuring cup. Found it. There it is. Ow! Jeez, Louise. Okay, I have to pick up the big kids from school in uh, like now. Oh, where's my measuring cup? This is perfect. I am just gonna take. Uh, because I'm realizing, uh, wow, my potato masher is not, oh, what's in there? Powdered sugar? That's good. It'll just add flavor. It's cool. It's cool. I'm just going to puree it in here. Oh, oh, it's going to leak everywhere. It's really awesome. I guess I overfilled it. I let it puree for quite a while, so the chunkiness is gone, and I'm just going to pour it right into this pot. Oh, great. And I'm going to do that about seven more times. Oh, Bobby, and your goulash. Look how good that looks. It's fantastic. Once my Instant Pot is ready, I'm gonna throw my spaghetti squash in there. And it's all back in there. Ah, oh, it's so hot. Now we're gonna add the meat. Wait, should we wilt the kale first? Let's just wilt the kale, that's a great idea. Oh, and what else do we add? I think we add some half and half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, as long as the, ooh, I don't know if this is gonna work either. I'm just gonna put it on saute. That way, you know, it stays hot and the kale is able to wilt in here. That's not all the kale, by the way. And then this is it. Just make it work, you know? That's all we do here. We just make things work. We added salt and pepper. The recipe suggests adding red pepper flakes if you're into that. I don't think my kids are gonna be into that. I'm actually kind of nervous to taste it because I feel like, ooh, smell is doing me dirty. I am a cook, so we must taste. Ooh, pretty nice. The very last thing to add is one cup of half and half. Uh, if you don't have half and half or don't wanna do the dairy, you can do coconut milk or any type of cream or milk that you have. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna add a lot of flavor too. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Oh, look how nice that looks. It does look really good. All right, once this is wilted for just a few minutes, I am going to add, I don't know how I'm gonna add it, but I'm gonna combine these two. Maybe I'll go get my big Bertha bowl and then I'm gonna throw it into bags and prep it for the freezer. Five hours later, we finally have a freezer meal. Okay, I picked up the kids from school and the soup and everything has had plenty of time to cool. So I am gonna use this big Bertha bowl. You guys know I love it so much. I'm gonna use it to mix everything in because I feel like this is the only bowl it's gonna fit in. I will say the kids uh, came into the house and they were like, what is that smell? Avelina thought it smelled like Chinese food. I don't know what kind of Chinese food she's eating. Oh my word, this is a happy pot. <gasps> Ooh, it's nice and thick too. Oh, sick. Oh my gosh, do you see this? I feel like when I tasted it initially and it was just cauliflower basically and onion, wasn't that great. But now with the cream and the kale and the sausage and the bacon and the flavor, I feel like it's gonna be fantastic. Time for another taste test. <laughs> Look how small this spoon is compared to the size of the bowl. All right, here we go. A bon appetit. Oh, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum on the kick drum. That's good stuff. Okay, I have a few bags and I recently got, well not recently, it's been months, I've been using the reusable silicone Ziploc bags and I love them. I'm using, I have seven of them and they're all being occupied so I have to use the plastic ones. I guess I should buy more of those because I really do love them and I use them all the time. So, kale soup. Ironically enough, I'm gonna use my blender because <laughs> I can't find a pitcher or anything. To, I'm just gonna fill the bags up. I'm always one step behind Wishing I could read your mind But I'm ready Yeah, never ready I wish I could have made it stop The first time that you stood me up I wasn't ready Yeah, never ready Well, I, the blade in the blender <laughs> cut a hole in the bag. 
Yeah. Wasn't thinking about that. Oh, they're all leaking? Yeah. That one's leaking at least. We're, we're gonna finish Robert's goulash over here. And I'm gonna finish mine off. This is not in the recipe. Oh man, I love a good spaghetti squash. But they are a pain in the rear to cut open without also cutting your hand off. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, yep. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this. <gasps> oh, got it. Oh, still have all nine fingers. I know it's kind of a pain to cut, but it's so worth it. Just do it. There's ways that you can make it easier on yourself. You can like use a rolling pin and tap down, but my rolling pins are made out of like particle board and that just doesn't work out for me. Plus, I have really big muscles. Uh -oh. uh, what'd you say? I have too many cutting boards? <laughs> are you not? I'm just gonna set my trivet in there. Oh no, will it even fit? Oh no. I guess I picked out a really big spaghetti squash. You know what? We'll make it fit because we must. If you wanna season it up, all right, let's just season it up. Don't be lazy, Kim. What I like to do is a little bit of oil, not a lot, just a little bit. Then you rub that around. You can use coconut oil if you want. Then just a little bit of salt and pepper. I mean, we're getting really fancy up in here. Culinary school has nothing on this. Pop it in the Instant Pot. Maybe I should take the sticker off. You know what? I'm not going to. We're not eating the skin. I'm gonna cook it for like 10 minutes, I feel like. I'm gonna reference my cheat sheets again. Okay, we're gonna do 15 minutes. Here we go. So my kitchen currently looks like a disaster, but that's okay, because we are not even halfway through. Hey, Meredith. Hey, girl. What are you doing? Are you my sous chef? So my Instant Pot just said burn because I forgot one very important component. Water. <laughs> oh gosh. Double trouble. So I looked over the ingredients and wouldn't you know it, surprise, surprise, I don't have something. Bread flour. Of course, Joanna Gaines would have bread flour in her pizza dough recipe, but I've never made pizza dough with bread flour. I normally use all-purpose flour. So, guess what? That's what we're gonna do. Flour, a little bit of sugar, yeast, salt, some water, oil, good to go. I just realized they may not have even explained what we're making. Pizza rolls. The best. We get them from our pizza place like our local pizza place and my kids gobble them up every time we have people over <coughs> oh sorry i just sneezed about a million times so i don't know what i was saying but everyone who tries these pizza rolls love them so i'm going to recreate them they do not have sauce in them which is the best for me because it's my least favorite part of anything pizza related what am i doing two and a half teaspoons of sugar two and a half, a quarter cup of warm water. It was too, too much, it was too much sugar. It was too much sugar. The sneezing got to my brain. It's two and a half teaspoons of yeast and half a teaspoon of sugar. But that's okay, we like a sweet dough. I'm just gonna mix that. We're gonna let that proof for five minutes. Okay, you know what? I'm pretty sure we don't have to let this proof. Do we just proof to make sure that the yeast is alive? Because that looks alive and well. We put a ton of sugar in there. They're having a feast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the salt. Two teaspoons of salt. Three and a half cups of uh, bread flour. But I'm doubling, so I'm hoping that seven cups is gonna fit in here. Uh-oh, was that three? I'm pretty sure. Surely we need more water than this too. Seven. Oh, you know why? I didn't double the water. We need one more quarter cup. Quarter, well, you know what? Hold on, here's what we're gonna do. We need some olive oil. We need a quarter cup of olive oil, and I'm just gonna add it into the quarter cup of water that I forgot to add earlier. It's like no big deal, okay? Lord, I'm not mumbling. And I'm just gonna shove that on top, and then we need, spill it, one cup of room temperature water, but to be real, mine's a little on the warm side. I have my dough hook on, we're gonna whip it up. So far, so good. Actually, it looks a little dry, but I have high hopes. It is Joanna Gaines, after all. Okay, I'm sorry, Joanna Gaines. I'm gonna have to add more water. I mean, it's drier than the Sahara. This is outrageous. Let me see, let me, oh my God. Gotta get more water. I mean, am I reading the recipe correctly? Like, I followed the recipe, I don't know. 
No, I'm not reading it wrong. I just didn't double it. <laughs> oh, Kim, when will you learn? Okay, this looks much better. Oh yeah, perfect. I'm gonna let that knead for about five minutes. Okay, I was not recording apparently, but I pulled this out and it was a little sticky. Well, it was a little sticky until I put just the smallest amount of flour on my hands. Anyway, I'm just gonna dust it real quick and knead it in with my hands because are you really baking if you're not making a huge mess? Now I'm going to just put a little bit of oil in the bowl, plop the dough in there, cover it, there we go, and let it rise for just one hour. Okay, our spaghetti squash is done. And I'm just going to see how much, woo! I'm just gonna see how much comes out of one. It just peels right off. Do you see this? Let me bring you in closer, Tony Danza. Do you see how it just falls right off of there? And it kind of looks like spaghetti. It comes off in little shreds like that. It's awesome. The taste is very mild. I've never met anyone who doesn't like a spaghetti squash. Okay, this was quite a large one and that was just half of it. But I think before I shred the other half, ugh, I'm gonna see how many pans, because this is at least two dinners. I'm gonna see if I can stretch it to a third. Oh yeah, for sure I'll be able to. Spinning like a broken record For a player you don't know that many major chords We hang out and then you get bored And you leave me here like I'm your f landlord You come back and say Okay, this easily made three cast I mean these things are huge and we'll probably have leftovers on this. I, it's a lot, is all I'm trying to say. It's a lot, so I'm just gonna mix in the spaghetti squash. I did decide to add it to a separate one, just to mix things up a little bit. And uh, once I'm done, I'm gonna cover it. And the directions for reheating this, uh, you know what, it's the same as any pasta dish. And I never really follow directions, so maybe I'm not the best person to give you directions, but Technically, how about thaw it overnight, and then when you're ready to eat it, pop it in your oven at about 375 for an hour, an hour and a half until it's done. But what I do is I just pop it straight into my oven, like completely frozen, because that's how I plan my life, and I leave it in there for like two hours, maybe at 350, you know, a little lower, a little longer. Close. Good to go. That is so much pasta. I could have done a fourth one, if I'm being honest with you. And if you have a smaller family than us, get the eight by eight tins, perfect. And look at that, when the squash is all mixed in, you can't even tell, do you know what I mean? Your kids will not be able to pick this out. Robert's goulash, good old Bob, good old Bobby boy. Next up, we're moving on to chicken tacos. And I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. It's the kind that, well, I get them from like, oh, my nail polish is already chipping washing so many dishes. It's the kind that I get from, oh my gosh, so many distractions. Look at the difference of sizes in that chicken. Okay, I get them from Costco. They sell them at Trader Joe's and it's like a corn tortilla. Inside is like a spicy mixture of chicken and deliciousness, probably cheese. So I just looked at the recipe that I have. One, two, three, four, five, let's do a baby six. Well, maybe seven. I don't know how many we're gonna make. And this one looks really small, so why not? How can we leave that guy out? And then a cup of water. And I'm just going to cook this chicken, and then we're gonna shred it. And if I have yet to mention this, you do not need to cook it in your Instant Pot, any of the stuff that I'm cooking in your Instant Pot. The spaghetti squash can go in your microwave for like 20, 25 minutes, or in your oven. Uh, and then the chicken you can boil on the stove top. I'm just using it because I have it, and I'm trying to like it. This is me, what? Okay, so it has been an hour. Oh, Meredith's gonna get a hold of it. You wanna punch it down? You punch it. Oh, you just wanna eat it? Yeah, how's it taste? Ooh, good stuff. Ooh, it's nice and fluffy. All right, I'm just gonna, really Meredith, help me out here. Help me take the bowl off. This happens every time. 
Oh, I'm gonna have to put the baby down. Oh, come on. Oh, every time we make dough in this thing, there's gotta be a trick to it. My hair's gonna fall out. Come on. Oh, come on. All right, last time we gave it a good bear hug. Maybe that's what it needs this time. Oh my, that's what, just a little bit of love. It's all anyone wants. Okay, I am just, oh yes, this dough feels so good. I'm just gonna lightly dust the surface. And I, you know what, I don't know how many this is going to make, but I'm not gonna wait another hour for dough to rise, so this is just gonna have to be good enough. I guess I sh could have tripled or quadrupled the recipe. All right, get out your rolling pin, or not. I mean, if you're really fancy, hey, let's try this. Oh, pizzeroni pasta something. Oh, it's so good. Did I tell you guys I'm a Food Network star? Okay, ooh. Okay, let's try this again. I, ooh. I'm Italian, I used to live in Italy. You'd think this skill would be in my blood, right? I mean, look at this. Do you see this action? Someone get me a pizzeria. This is ridiculous. But we need it in a rectangle. That's enough tomfoolery. All right, I think that's pretty amazing if you ask me. And I'm just gonna cut it into squares. I would give you measurements, but clearly that's not my thing. Okay, obviously you can put any type of filling that you want. I am just going to put pepperoni and cheese. You can obviously put whatever you want inside of it. Am I doing this right? And then you just roll it up like a, a crescent. Oh, that's so cool. The pizza dough broke. That's really cool. Okay, that's enormous. Okay, a little bit of trial and error here. Listen, I've never made these before. Couple pepperonis, a little bit of cheese, and you roll, 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 roll it. Pepperoni. Cheese. What am I doing wrong here? <laughs> they look so much better when we get them from the pizza place. <laughs> the real magic is what you coat it on top with. Not long ago you got hurt, someone did you wrong. I can see it in your eyes, it's like your fire is gone. Across your face, it is written across your face. If you want to talk, I'm right here, not gonna leave your side. Just feel free to open up when the moment's right. Across your face, it is written across your face. If you want to go out, we can go out. You can hide away just for one night. But if you want to cry, just let it out. I'm by your side.
Oh my word, I vastly underrated how difficult that would be. I really feel like I was getting the hang of it toward the end there. <laughs> This is probably the least attractive thing I've ever made, but I hope that they eat, at least taste good. Here's what makes them taste good. I don't know how if this is how they do it at the restaurant. Probably not. But I spray it with oil. I'm sure you could brush it with oil too. That would probably be better. And then you get this powder Parmesan cheese. Something about the powder kind. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on top. I might use my hands. It might be helpful if I pour it the correct way. You know what I'm thinking? Maybe wait till the end to put on the Parmesan cheese. I don't know. Learn from my mistakes. That's how we learn, trial and error. Oh, it's heavy. I put it in the oven, 421 degrees. Oh, here's what they look like all finished. I would definitely put the cheese on after the fact, but I'm sure it's still great. Honorable mention to these cooling racks that I got from a garage sale for a dollar. Amazing! Anyway, these are the ones that I did at the end. They do look much better. I mean, they still let out some cheese, but they do look a lot better. Okay, I have all this stuff from Madras lentils ready to go. Oh, I forgot to vent the chicken. Okay, let's check it out. Hopefully it's cooked. Oh, perfectly cooked. Look at that. You touch it and it just falls apart. And that's exactly what we need to happen right now. Big Bertha bowl probably isn't necessary, but I don't care. I'm going to use it. And I'm just gonna throw the chicken right into the bowl. <laughs> Tongs would be better for this. But this is so much more fun. Now, the recipe that I have printed out for this is pretty simple. You just take shredded chicken and then some corn tortillas, and I think cheese. Let me refer back to my notes. Yeah, just shredded cheese. But I feel like, well, that's kind of boring. Certainly you could do that. Uh, but I'm going to add more. Whoa! I know, I hear you. Use your KitchenAid to shred. I would, but like, I don't feel like cleaning this bowl, you know? I feel like I want to make it a little spicy. Surely you can add some vegetables. Oh no! For a second I thought I ate through all my salsa. This is the best salsa in the entire universe. It tastes fresh, but somehow it lasts for months. I don't know how they do it. I don't question things. Oh my, give me a spoon. I can eat it right out of the jar. You know what? All of it. And then I feel like it could benefit from maybe some cream cheese. It'll make it nice and creamy, but I bought a ton of this cheese, so I'm just gonna use it. Just a couple handfuls. I'm gonna mix that and see what it looks like. You could also use salsa verde in here. You're basically making like enchilada filling, maybe? Ooh, I do have some enchilada sauce. That would be good. This is a great after school snack as well. I feel like if you just had chicken and cheese, you could maybe add some taco seasoning or cumin or whatever spices that you like. Cilantro if you have it. Uh, but the salsa, I, it's really, it smells good, so I'm gonna be good with that. To make your corn tortillas a little bit more pliable, I just wrap them in a, ooh, it's hot, a damp paper towel. Oh my god, maybe I put it in a little too long. Anyway, that just ensures that they won't crack when you're hot. Filling them up. I have chef hands, I can deal with some heat, okay? Can't stand the heat, you get out of my dang kitchen. Keep those wrapped up. It's great, it's great, it's great, it's great. And then I am gonna take probably, not a whole, well, I guess that's a whole scoop. You just put it in there, fold it over, press it down, and put it right on your tray. One step forward and another back I will never try to fool ya I'm one heartbeat away from going mad Girl, when you're looking like that Closer, closer I'ma get closer to you, yeah Got me, baby Got me hooked on you once again My house is filling up with smoke, so that's my vent fan. You take a sheet pan and just cover it right on top. I just cleaned it, no worries. Uh, and that ensures that the tacos don't pop open. Throw it in your oven to 425. 
For Madras lentils, my kids are obsessed with Madras lentils, so I figure, hey, let me try to make them from scratch. We'll see how it works out. Two onions, two bell peppers, again, I'm doubling the recipe, uh, red lentils or green, whatever you have, tomato sauce, I don't have it in a can, so I'm using spaghetti sauce. Hopefully it'll be okay, you know what I mean? Chili powder, some beans. The recipe calls for one can. I'm doubling it, but then I'm also tripling it because I love me some beans and the lentils. I got this, it was optional. Masala, M masala seasoning, and apparently it makes, it gives it more of that authentic Indian flavor, and I'm all about that, so I definitely picked some up. Paprika, cumin, and then some chicken broth. Let's do it. So the first thing we're going to do is saute the peppers and onions. And also you can make this in your slow cooker or of course on the stove top. And you know what, it says to saute them, but I feel like they're gonna cook just fine in the Instant Pot. So I'm probably not gonna saute them for very long. I'm running out of spoons. I'm gonna season this with just some salt. Oh my gosh, a dumpster load. It's fine. We're fine. Okay, I'm just gonna add the spices. Four cloves of garlic, and we're doubling. Two teaspoons of chili powder, but we're doubling. Perfect. One teaspoon smoked paprika. <laughs> One teaspoon cumin, and sadly that's all I have, which is probably pretty accurate, but that's not a kin-sized teaspoon, you know? some salt, which we have definitely added, and then one teaspoon of this stuff, but I'm gonna go overboard, definitely, because, yes. You need one 14 ounce can of tomato sauce, so I'm just gonna add that whole jar. And then, I don't know how much chicken broth. Oh, two cups, oh, I opened one jar too many, or can, that's okay. I'm doubling, so two cans. I think there should be about two cups in here about just shy so i am gonna add a little bit more since i have it open and then one can of beans nowhere on the recipe does it say to drain the beans so i didn't well actually i drained the third can just because oh crap was i supposed to add the beans probably not ba -da -da -da. wasn't supposed to oh well can't take them out and then one cup of lentils but I'm doubling, so I'm gonna do two cups. I'm gonna give that a nice mix. 18 minutes for red lentils, let's do it. Okay, so we made chicken tacos, we made pizza rolls, we made madras lentils, we made, oh, chicken and veg. We made cauliflower soup and Robert's goulash. We didn't make the breakfast, I figure we'll do that in a different video. One, two, three, four, five, is that enough or should we throw together some chicken packs? <gasps> Ooh, how about sausage and veggies? You guys have seen me make this so many times. It's just a bunch of cut up vegetables and chicken or chicken sausage. It's like my favorite meal. I'll link all the recipes and probably a video where I've made that before. Ooh, perfection. You guys. We had a lot of problems with the Instant Pot, which is no surprise. It kept saying burn, 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 burn. Every time I tried to put it on and it came to pressure, it would say burn. So then I just put it on crock pot, or what does it say, slow cooker? So I did that twice and each time it's two hours. So it's like four in the morning, <laughs> but it's done and it tastes really good. Alex just had some. He said it was really good. I had a bite. Uh, as you can tell, there are some burned bits, so I don't know what was going on. There is plenty of liquid in here. It must have been the spices or something, so there's that. But it does taste really, really good. So I guess I'll put those in bags or something. Also, I don't know how hard I need to emphasize this, but it smells really, really good like really good, like that special spice, that Indian spice, that's worth the money. I don't, it wasn't even that expensive, maybe $3, but it tastes really, really, really good. And it's it smells really, really good too. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me and making these freezer meals with me, cook with me. Hopefully I will be set for dinners for quite a while. I hope you got some recipe inspiration. Mostly everything turned out perfectly few adjustments would could be made. But again, you learn from my mistakes. It's perfect, everything turns out just fine. It's food, you eat it, and then you eat again your next meal. It's not really a big deal. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed your time. I always enjoy your company. If you want to, subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.